today's topic, summer games, but, but, but not the Olympic kind, the, the board games that you play during the summer type of, of games. And that's, that's today's topic. Welcome to Table Scraps, short discussions about board, card, and tabletop gaming submitted by the viewing audience and discussed with the viewing audience. Hey everyone! Hi and welcome back to another episode of Table Scraps, the live streaming show here on Pair of Dice Paradise, hosted by me, Chaz Marler, and performed in conjunction with the live streaming YouTube chat who joins us for each episode to discuss a topic about board, card, and tabletop gaming. And today is one of those special work and school holiday editions, I am joined by in-studio uh, guests, the executive producers of Pair of Dice Paradise, <laughs> my wifey and daughter V-Bug. So go ahead and say hi. Hello. So. Hi. <laughs> so their disembodied voices will be joining us uh, in the background of, of this, this show. Today's topic of discussion comes from viewer Chaz Marler, who asks, <laughs> here's your topic. Today is Labor Day, which is traditionally, it signals the end of summer. Wow, I can't even read what this guy wrote. You'd think I would be able to know exactly what was written here. Today is Labor Day, which traditionally signals the end of summer. Are there any games that go especially well with the long days and outdoor events that accompany summer? What games were you introduced to this summer? And how did they go? And how did you incorporate them into your summer events? Now, excellent question there. I couldn't have come up with a better question myself. So I know that this summer, I actually took the opportunity to introduce my family to a new game that we had not played together as a family. And I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. But first I want to set the stage. Uh, one thing that happens inevitably every summer, there's at least one camping trip, it seems like. I don't know why, I have no history of doing this at camping events, but for some reason, every time that there's a camping event and we're going to a campsite, I get this craving, this this yearning to go out and get some uh, Magic the Gathering booster packs and do a sealed deck drafting tournament. And, and it's so weird because I, I think out of all the years I've gone camping, I've actually only played one game of, of Magic the Gathering with someone at the uh, at the camping table because the wind kicks up and blows all the cards away. Uh, yeah, the thank you wind sound effects over there. Yeah. Yes, just like that. And, um, can you smell our breath? Yes, I can smell your breath. Yes. So instead, I usually try to grab something else that's uh, camping compatible. Uh, something that usually has like Bakelite tiles, like Hive or uh, Ingenious is a good one. Games like that that have heavier components are usually what I bring bring along to camping. But this year I just happened to have um, something new with me and the wind cooperated enough where uh, we actually did an escape room. This one right here actually, this specific instance of it, we did the Escape the Room Mystery at Stargazer's Manor while we were camping. And it was neat because we were able to um, have it laid out on the table and like I said, the wind cooperated. That was a big factor in it. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your guys' impressions? Because uh, this was the first escape room in a box that we all did together. In fact, this is the first escape room in a box I think each of us have done. So how, how did it go? I enjoyed I enjoyed that one's particular puzzles. Um, the, the fact that it had some physical, like, you know, puzzles on paper. It had do. some bits and pieces to mm -hmm. move around. It had some one with tiles, mm -hmm. had one uh, way and you use in, in this version you use this has a special made dial where you'll line up these clues and um, if you, all the clues you think are the right answer line up correctly it'll give you a signal that yes yeah. you're right. So it has this dial with dials within dials that you have to get them all correctly like dial you know coordinates to dial in. What about you little V-Bug? What did you think of this one? I didn't like the pipes. <laughs> there was a particular puzzle in here that, uh, yes, uh, we, we had, uh, my mother-in-law was camping with us and we split into two teams for some of the puzzles and V-Bug and I were working on one puzzle that involved pipes and uh, my wife and mother-in-law were working on these other puzzles and they got theirs done and then they got the next one done and the next one done and V-Bug and I could not get this pipe puzzle figured out and we finally... We handed it over and my mother-in-law went, oh, it would be this. And like within two minutes, she she had it. She was, I don't know how She's she did. She's vicious with games. She is, she is surprisingly vicious with games. <laughs> she, she, I think I've, I've mentioned my mother-in-law before. She's like this, what is she, five foot? 4'11". She's 4'11". She's a preschool teacher. She's like a little elf, a little Christmas elf. But you get out a game like um, 
survive, um, survive <laughs> escape from Atlantis, um, or <laughs> she wins it. She is gets vicious. I I know uh, wits and wagers. Even she Witch gets vicious. She gets just this really competitive streak. I am almost afraid to introduce her to Power Grid because I think she would just <laughs> smear the floor with us. And when we came home a couple weeks later, uh, we got out. Uh, I got a couple copies of the Unlock series, and this is different. This is an also an escape room in a box, and it's just a deck of cards, and you go through, and it it, it replicates an escape room with the puzzles really well uh, in terms of that. But what was your impression with the Unlock series? Um, with the Unlock series, I really didn't like how it penalized you for guessing incorrectly. Okay. Um, it does have an app. It has an app that goes along with it, and you plug in your answers into the app. And if you are wrong, you, you have a time limit. It will deduct several minutes from your overall time. That was a bit frustrating because there were several ones where you'd think that the, the answer was obvious, and it wasn't that. <laughs> Avibug, what did you think of the um, this one compared to the other one? Nah. Now you preferred this one? I appreciate the Unlock series, and I'll play more of them, um, but the Escape Room in a Box, actually, um, with the wind cooperating, was a really good summer event outdoor activity and was one of the new things that we took advantage of this summer. But let's go now to the live streaming chat, and let's see what some people are saying here. Let's see where our chat begins. Let's start off with a comment by Patrick Doss, who says, Games that can withstand the outside elements are really good. Hive Carbon uses Bakelite resin, and Junk Art uses wooden and plastic components and can be safely played outdoors. The less cardboard, the better. Uh, that is absolutely true. There was there was one day um, with the game club that I, I run occasionally here in, in town, um, we have it in our local community center. And there was one day that um, whoever was supposed to get the key was given the wrong key or something and couldn't unlock the community center. So fortunately, it was summer, and so we all went to a local park and played on picnic benches in, in the park. So we, for the most part, were able to salvage the game day. One of the games we played was Revolution with uh, all of the little um, blackmail and gold and fist tokens. And those kind of were hard for people to track outside. But that, that's that's why games that, if you're gonna play outside, less cardboard the better. Yes, Patrick, that's definitely definitely the way to go, speaking from, from personal experience. You mentioned Hive, um, and I mentioned Ingenious a while ago. If there's any other games that incorporate a lot of Bakelite tiles, I know Rummy Cube does. Um, if there's any others that you guys know of, let, let's make a list of those because it might be nice to make a good wind-compatible, outdoors-compatible list of board games, which I'm sure probably already exists on BoardGameGeek. But if not, you know, we can, we can make a list there to see what we come up with. But in the meantime, let's continue on to Toyota Wolf, who says... I find that a lot of the tiny epic games or the mint tin games make for excellent camping or traveling games. I've also taken Joking Hazard, Sushi Go Party, and Code Names, which are a lot of card-based games. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm wondering how you made a lot of those card-based games uh, work with the camping experience because, like I said, I, in my experience, the wind and little pine needles falling into the game are always. <laughs> oh, you, you spend a lot of time carefully going like like this when you're playing a game on a picnic table at a campground. I, so I'd like to know how you make those work, but I, I think that's really good. I hadn't thought of junk art. Junk art is a game where you have all these different little shaped wooden pieces, and you're actually stacking them to make statues. So I'm, I'm curious too, same thing, is junk art, I hadn't thought of one that might be camping compatible because of the wind factor, but um, if the pieces are heavy enough to withstand those slight breezes, junk art is definitely a good one, as long as you don't lose the pieces when they roll off the table and maybe slide between the picnic table slats. But now I might be overthinking it. So let's continue on to the next comment from Axentroll, who says, for outdoor games, something not made of paper or cardboard, and don't fall apart if knocked. Well, that junk art, though, right there, is the opposite of not falling apart if knocked. I think that just reinforces that, so, you know, you want a game that is as sturdy as possible. Perhaps something made out of plywood. So, um, you know, do you know of any games made of plywood or other heavy concrete type materials? <laughs> Anything that we could add to the list? Oh, Battleship! 
Battles. <laughs> there you go. Battle sheep. That uh, actually has a little bake light tiles. Battle sheep would be a really good one for camping. Actually, it's light. It's fast. It can accommodate multiple players, and it's different every time. And you can make the layout fit the amount of space you have available on the table that you have in your camping area. I was thinking be... about like where words. But where words is a good. Well, where words has lots of little discs, but yeah. But you also, you can put them in the box lids so they won't oh. blow away. Where words, I think, is good because it uses an app. So Ooh. games that incorporate an app might be a really, really good one. Yeah. So there we go. Ooh, there we go. All right, let's continue on here. Amber joins us to say, can you imagine playing Werewolf by the Campfire? Makes everything a lot more <laughs> ominous. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I think a good oh, Werewolf would be an excellent <laughs> game to play by the light of the Campfire. Uh, I don't know if I would be able to get any sleep that night because <laughs> I would probably get freaked out. <laughs> camping games, something that does incorporate a little bit of role playing. Role playing would be great with camping where you're just sitting and talking. And... What about my game? Which one's that? The one we Francini. Francini. Oh, yes. Uh, v Bug uh, has developed her own kind of uh, game that is a cross between RPG, role playing, and live action a little bit. And we've been, that would actually be good. As long as all the little pieces don't blow away in the wind. It's all made out of cardboard. There's so many, so much cardboard in that. Kabuki Kid mentions, again, Werewolf. Werewolf seems like an easy one for camping groups, or One Night Ultimate Werewolf if I had a smaller group. That's a good one. The version of Werewolf that uses coins instead of cards seems even better. Oh, I did not know that such a thing existed. So yes, there you go. Heavier coin components as opposed to cardboard. Anything we can do to minimize the amount of light cardboard in the game would be a bonus. Don't stick your noses up at things like Boggle and stuff like that, too, because some of that, sometimes that can be really fun. Bonus, Boggle bonus. I, I, I mentioned in my top 100 mm -hmm. that I re mad respect to Boggle. I like <laughs> Boggle. But added bonus to Boggle, if you sit there and you shake that container, shake it, 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 shake it you're going to have your campsite all to yourself really quickly because the people on each side of you are going to relocate to other areas. <laughs> so you'll have the campground all to yourself because they won't want to hear all that. <laughs> Go on to the next comment here from Trevin, who says, anyone play true outdoor games like Cornhole Cub, pronounced Koob, oh, Koob, that's how it's pronounced, and or others? I just found Koob this year. I think Koob is also known as Skull. That is something I think is really good to keep in mind, Trevin, is true outdoor games. You know, horseshoes. There's uh, horseshoe pits mm -hmm. that are set up at the campgrounds that we go to. And e I think that... Um, as board gamers, I don't know. Do we just not think of these other possible activities? Do you think people, do you think board gamers turn their nose up at those types of activities? No, I think anything that's fun with your friends, that's, what's, that's what it's all about. It's hanging out and having fun. I have a confession. Yes. What? When we're at a campground, I see people playing horseshoes. I, I, th I think that uh, it's like, I, I can come up with something that's more mentally stimulating than just playing horseshoes. I have that cro I have that thought cross my mind. What if they don't want something mentally stimulating? Oh, I'm not going to turn my, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make fun of anyone who plays horseshoes and I'm not going to turn my nose up at it. But I do have those thoughts of, oh, I've, I, I've brought better games than that. I do have that thought cross my mind. Well. I, I, it's an evil thought. I bat it down with a horseshoe. Well, but. Well, that's, that just makes everyone unique. You know, we're all different. I know that my brother likes things that you don't like. You know, he does fishing. He's a very yes. active outdoorsman. Yeah, that's true. And you are not. I do not. No, I'm a bit of a homebody, aren't I? I'll, I'll sit in a dank room talking to myself and record it. That's There you go. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on to Kazencha, who says, some rules light RPGs work really well for camping, as I recall. Ideally with a spooky theme to play by the campfire. They go, oh yes, a light RPG, a one-shot RPG session. Yes. Oh, that could be really cool. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, I'm thinking the go I was thinking the go-to would be traditional fantasy, because you're in the woods. But actually, no. if you could come up with something Blair Witch-like. I was thinking more horror. Yeah. Yeah. Myself. Ooh. That that I mean, because that's standard. Yeah. What 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 little V bug? I thought of another game. Uh huh. What about the Ghostbusters game? Ghostbusters one would be good because oh, yeah. that has very few tokens and a lot mm -hmm. of well it has cards in it too, but it does have containers oh. in the insert. Oh. So let's uh, get a few more here and we'll wrap up. Uh, next is from Patrick who says, "Whenever I attend family reunions at park pavilions, party games like two rooms and a boom are usually successful. Each player has one card and they're held in hand the whole game." Oh. Two things there, Patrick. Yeah, two rooms in a boom. You do have to have a larger group, I think. Six or more people, more the better to really make 
pull that one off. But yeah, those bigger social party games like that are definitely good ones. And uh, actually, that was another um, summer, common summer event, are like family reunions and get-togethers. That was the other place that we played, did a lot of gaming, is mm -hmm. um, big, back in our hometown, there were a lot of family slash friend reunions. Yeah. And that was that was really cool because you have a different play group too to mm. introduce things to, and you'll have people that are like, you know, uh, playing a game like Seven Wonders, and they're like, I've never seen a game like this. You mm -hmm. know, so, so that could be a really good way to introduce new people. Next is from Gazentia again, who says. Who just wants to add in that there's, but remember, there's nothing wrong with stuff like Bulls or other traditional outdoor, outdoor dexterity games. Yes, unless you are an unintentional gaming snob who, for some reason, almost turns her nose up at horseshoes for no good reason. Uh, definitely, there is absolutely nothing wrong with traditional outdoor dexterity games. They've endured for centuries and they're good games. So um, boo to anyone who thinks that the board games they brought to the campground are <laughs> superior. Boo, I say. Sasha says, any game with heavier components should do well. Mm -hmm. Dice games and card games. Make sure to choose a game that you are willing to play in public. Playing lunch money on a ferry wasn't the best choice that we made. <laughs> it's probably a good choice. Cards Against Humanity probably is not one yeah. that I would bring to a public campground area, even if you have a secluded campground mm -hmm. with the people walking by. <laughs> or with the case of this year, walking people walking through. through. <laughs> we have like two people an hour just walk through the campsite. I'm going over there. Excuse me. Well, we were right, right by the river. That's why. Yeah. Well, yeah. Still, but. <laughs> and let's wrap up with Patrick, who says Santorini is fun to play outside mm -hmm. too. Oh, there we go. There's yeah. one. Yeah, it's That's not. It's not Bakelite tiles, but it's the heavier plastic pieces. Uh, yeah, Santorini would be, I think, a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, camping game. Um, as long as it's not so windy that it actually blows over the plastic. But if, if it's that windy, you probably won't want to get in your tent and, and just hide under your sleeping bag anyway. <laughs> but yeah, Santorini and games like that would be uh, excellent ones. So uh, thank you. Perfect example there, Patrick. Um, and that perfect example is a perfect example of the, I don't know where I was going with that. That makes no sense. So with Patrick's excellent suggestion there, unfortunately it is time to say goodbye people. And but I want to thank everyone who's joined us in the comments, um, either live streaming or in the comments later after this is posted. Uh, it's the participation with folks like you that makes this episode work. Another thing that makes this type of episode work is the financial contributions that you guys have been making on the pod pledge fundraiser website. Uh, the support of viewers like you is what makes episodes like this possible to keep doing. So thank you really much. It's uh, really appreciated and it does make a difference. But until the next episode that we can get together, I've been Chaz Marler, who along with the live streaming YouTube chat and special holiday edition in-studio guests have been serving up some table scraps. Talk to you again soon. Today's topic, Olympic game. No, that's the wrong. It's not, that was a, okay. <clears throat> wrong word. I'll be, I'll be better soon. <laughs>